Hello everyone. Hello. I'm Tony. And I'm Telly. And we are the Lazy Book Clubbers. This is a podcast for book clubbers who procrastinate about reading and have never ending um, to be read piles. Uh, today's episode we're doing um, books with morally grey characters. Yeah, so. we literally uh, butchered um a blog, blog post on Tony's yeah. which is why it's vague I was going to do love interests and then I actually found that most of the books I wanted to put on this list it was not necessarily love interests mm. so I was like characters yeah just characters <laughs> so um, this isn't the whole of Tony's list mm. she had a humongous one so it'll be available in our card mm. a link to her blog post um, before we get to it I have a pre-planned tangent go on right. <laughs> pre-planned tangent pre-planned tangent <laughs> okay so I've got you something I wish one on holiday last week um, and I got you something which I feel like is on theme okay. for the podcast oh are you ready? God, I'm excited <gasps> <gasps> no <laughs> 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 oh my god, it's so cute! It's an octopus. Baby. But I, I was desperately trying to find some kind of weird Tenerife, weird janky octopus it. that looked like a kraken. <laughs> that would have been so funny. But in the end, I just got you an octopus. Oh my god, I love it! Thank you. And I just thought tentacles, shades of green, which is my favourite. Yeah. Oh, thank you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I was oh trying god. to find you some weird kraken type thing and that's that's all i could find was an octopus <laughs> that's gonna be like my um my legend like it's just gonna, that's what i'm gonna be known for now the kraken girl. oh my god i love it thank you okay that is so cute yeah i don't like when people go suck on holiday and give you key rings for the place that you've never been and then you've mm. just got a key ring for a place you've never been yeah but i was like so this is mo- mostly octopus and just a little bit of tenerife yeah oh i love it thank you um, but That's it was so just a little cute. nod to the tentacles oh yeah <laughs> go back and listen to episode 69 if you haven't already <laughs> anyway there we go that's, that's our pre-planned tangent <laughs> which she didn't know about it's so cute. <laughs> i love it thank you um, when I co- when I complete my lesbian transformation and I finally get my um, what are they called the um, crocodile clip no and you put oh your yeah on the, the, loop the on your jeans it's in a loop but it's on like a little bit of wire yeah, that you can pull out I can have this hanging out yeah you, that's what you're missing you're missing a lanyard I've been considering it and I was like you need a lanyard too, that you strap to your belt is it too gay. <laughs> And then I was like, no, I'll just complete the essence. I should just, just do it. Just, just do it. Because when I get to the house and I have baby and carrying mm-hmm. all of my son's bags and a stick he picked up that he couldn't carry because he needs his hands <laughs> That's a well. very important stick. Yeah, and I'm like, I have to put stuff down to delve into my bag to find my keys. But if I had them, yeah. Just a whiff. Lesbian, right? Okay. <laughs> Lesbians have it right. <laughs> they certainly do. And then I'm going to be sporting my uh, kraken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, yeah, you just need to know that that stands for kraken whenever yeah. you look. Kraken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. So cute. Right. Um. Okay, so we're going to start with. Oh, so even though it's your list, you don't know what order I'm going to be doing it. No, because... Um, or, um, yeah, you don't even know which ones I picked, I don't think. I kind of just scroll through, yeah. but I'm not a thorough look. Because, yeah, she took the the blog and then went and found like the proper like summaries for each book. Because I don't link those anywhere. I just, I just literally did a bullet-pointed list of, mm. like, I found it from a bunch of different sources. Here's it all in one place. And then yeah. you went and took that and made it something we could actually use. For the so podcast. I've made a, um, a tag list on Storygraph. And it's available for the public, so you can have a look. It's called Books with Morally Great Characters. I will mm. link it in our card. So, Six of Crows. Yeah. Who, I think pretty much all of them are morally grey. But specifically, yeah. Kaz. Kaz. <laughs> yeah. Our Lord and Saviour, Kaz Brecker. <laughs> yeah, I'm halfway through season two of Shadow, Shadow and Bone. I not watched you still I need to watch. But they've been officially renewed for like a Six of Crows yeah spin-off which is actually following the events of six of crows mm. so it's kind of clever how they blended the two storylines like i can see why they how they've done it i saw some people were saying like um what they've used too much of like the six of crows story in it so what are they going to do specifically for but obviously i haven't seen it so i don't know what um oh like we're getting like Kaz's backstory now and things like that mm. 
So I don't. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what kind of arc. Yeah. They'll, they'll go on on the whole heist. Yeah, I forget that the Shadow and Bone show has the Shadow and Bone storyline mm. because it wouldn't have held up the show by itself. So I'm glad they mixed in the six. Of Matt and they, they genuinely have not tried to give Matt and Lena any more personality than they have in the actual fucking books. Um, yeah, so that wouldn't have carried. No, like my like Matt and Lena still suck. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Six of Crows is a duology which is, I guess, a kind of spin-off slash continuation from the Shadow and Bone series by Set Lee Bardugo. Set in the Grishaverse. Yeah, the Grishaverse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we've got the Rule of Wolves duology. Stars, yeah. And then there's a new something coming out. So Six of Crows is the first in the duology. I will read you the blurb from a storygraph. Ketterdam, a bustling hub of international trade where anything can be had for the right price and no one knows that better than criminal prodigy Kaz Brecker. Kaz is offered a chance at a deadly heist that can make him rich beyond his wildest dreams but he cannot pull it off alone. There's a convict with a first a thirst for revenge, a sharp shooter who can't walk away from a wager, a runaway with a privileged past, oh yeah, mm-hmm. a spy known as the Wraith, a heart render using her magic to survive the slums, a thief with a gift for unlikely escapes. Kaz's crew is the only thing that might stand between the world and destruction if they don't kill each other first. Hmm. I have never read the actual Never have I. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a heist, which is, fantasy heists are brilliant. Yep, I and it's like a found family. Mm. Oh. All that great stuff. Yeah. Um, Kaz is unapologetically, like, who he's had to be to survive, and he does Aww. some pretty dodgy shit, but all the characters do some fairly, fairly dodgy shit. Like, they've all killed someone. It's the world they live in. Mm. Uh, I think if you were completely, like, good and kind and... Mm that and you'd very quickly get eaten up yeah, alive dead. so but like I don't know like they sort of show like the moral grey line he walks of like later on one of his enemies he threatens mm. he threatens the guy's kid and everyone's like oh that's too far mm. but then he actually hasn't hurt the kid no the kid is somewhere safe completely different yeah, like he could it's have just a done worse yeah, yeah. so it's like it, yeah so it's that the kind of line is that he's not hurting innocent I think children. Like, he wouldn't use slaves. Like uh, he's done really well at, um, cultivating like a mystique around himself. Mm. So he he does do bad stuff. I'm not saying he doesn't. Yeah, he's, he's done what he had hands. to do. But I think like With a bit of a moral code about it. Yeah, and people I think think he's a lot more evil than potentially he is. Well, especially as we know. get his inner, because you they it switches POVs, mm. and you get his inner monologue where he's like, "And as you are so beautiful, yeah, like Inesh, we get to Inesh, see him just Inesh. being all simping, <laughs> and then like I'm a sad boy, I'm so sad, my tragic backstory, TM, Inesh, 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 Inesh. Yeah. <laughs> I love her, <laughs> I have no and fucking see, idea what's going on, <laughs> and then you see other people looking at him, and they're like. Cold heart. He's not talking. He must be thinking about killing someone or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah, I like the colour of your nails. Just that quick tangent because I just noticed Although, that. Oh, that was my holiday nails. Holiday nails. You see, there's one stamped though. It was sad you were coming home. Oh, no, it was when I was um, shaving. Got, you know, when you catch it with a razor. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. Next on the list is another one we've both read, "The Cruel Prince" by Holly Black. So that's the yes. first in the Folk of Air series, and I've only read the first book. Yep. You've read the trilogy. Yep. I would say that the morally grey character is not who you think it's going to be going into it. No, I agree with that. Um, and I think that there's very much from just the first book I read. There's a um, an arc of a certain character, by which I mean the main character. Mm. The main character goes on a journey in the first book alone. Yeah. And I would say that she exemplifies some morally grey um But decisions. everyone would kind of think it's the prince who's the cruel, cruel exactly, prince, quite yeah. much. Because he actually isn't cruel and doesn't do a single fucking bad thing, really, apart from being a bit of a bully. Yeah, and like... Um, 
as we've kind of mentioned with Zodiac Academy in a previous episode, um, the Fae act how their people act. Mm. Like, it's in like the yeah, survival of the fittest kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. Of like, you know, you have to be, you have to Fae up, as they say in yeah. Zodiac Academy. <laughs> <laughs> so um <laughs> of course i want to be like them does that not taste good no <laughs> tony's just started tried to drink and she looks cucumber seltzer seltzer is just like fizzy drink right yeah i think it's just like fizzy i don't know i don't know how i feel about that was that from the, the box of healthy, healthy snacks? snacks something and nothing that's literally the name of the brand. Oh. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm going to keep drinking it, but... Cucumber seltzer. Sorry, guys, you're on the live reaction. Does it taste like cucumber? Yeah. If I hadn't been sick, I'd offer you to, like... But you don't want... <laughs> of course <laughs> I want to be like them. They're beautiful. As blades forged in some divine fire, they will live forever. And Cardin is even more beautiful than the rest. I hate him more than all the others. I hate him so much that sometimes when I look at him, I can hardly breathe. <laughs> Jude was seven years old when her parents were murdered, and she and her two sisters were stolen away to live in the treacherous high court of fairy. Ten years later, Jude wants nothing more than to belong here, despite oh, to belong there. Sorry, despite her mortality. But many of the Fae despise humans, especially Prince Cardon, the youngest and wickedest son of the High King. To win a place at the court, she must defy him and face the consequences. Yeah. Actually, I think that sums it up quite well. Yeah. It's usually um, sold as a very different book to what it is. People Enemies to talk lovers about, yeah. and like no. No, it's like political, it's uh, war. It's about Jude's rise to power essentially. Mm. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think she is the Mor- Morally Grey, Grey character, not yeah, him, but both definitely. people characterise the prince as Morally Grey. Yeah. When actually he does nothing wrong, he doesn't like hurting people, he doesn't like killing, <laughs> whereas Jude is just like fairly happy to towards <laughs> Yeah. As the books go on. Yeah, and once she learns that, or once she, um, yeah, learns, when she learns that she can use things like being able to lie to her advantage, mm. she very and much like, does. <laughs> she wants power. Mm. She starts to seek ways to feel powerful because she's powerless in a world full of, like, fairies. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because not, um, would it be considered a spoiler? I think if I phrase it a certain way, it wouldn't be. There does come an opportunity to escape or like leave that kind of Mm. dog eat dog world and she does not take it does not choose the easy route yeah it does not choose the easy route that's a good Mm. good way of saying it yeah good good. i really enjoyed this series yeah yeah i need to finish it (laughs) <laughs> oh, you like literally you read the first book recommended it to me so then I went and read all three and you were like I still haven't read anything more I read like two chapters of the second one <laughs> <laughs> that's just who I am as I've a done person, this a few, a few times though you like you read one book in the series and you've gone oh this is good read it and then I read the whole series and you're like okay I'll, I'll talk to you about this in two years time the only thing I didn't do that with was the Grisha verse mm. I devoured yeah. that yeah, you powered through that. And I almost did well. it with Skullduggery. Yeah. And then I hit Lost the... momentum. I don't know, 11 books deep, though. That's really good for you. That is, actually. I do need to finish that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, right. <laughs> it's been like a year since I went to see him. I know. <laughs> oh. I get distracted by shiny things, right? <laughs> if We Were Villains, neither of us have read this. No. Uh, by M. L. Rio. My understanding is every single character is mm, a dodge. probably not even morally great. I think they're all just bad characters. <laughs> uh, on the day Oliver Marks is released from jail, the man who put him there is waiting at the door. Detective Colborn wants to know the truth, and after ten years, Oliver is finally ready to tell it. A decade ago, Oliver is one of the seven young Shakespearean actors at Delcher Classical Conservatory, a place of keen ambition and fierce competition. In this secluded world of firelight and leather-bound books, Oliver and his friends play the same roles on stage and off. Hero, villain, tyrant, temptress. Ah, that word that 
I can't say. I think I got you to pronounce it last time. Ingenue. Thank you. <laughs> Extras. But in their fourth and final year, good-natured rivalries turn ugly, and on opening night, real violence invades the students' world of make-believe. In the morning, the fourth years find themselves facing their very own tragedy and their greatest acting challenge yet convincing the police each other and themselves that they are innocent. So, okay. um, I believe there's a murder. There's been a murder. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and... Are you even British if you don't? <laughs> and the story uh, kind of jumps between it all. Um, okay. So you know that Oliver's gone to jail for it, but I think the story is unraveling whether he was mm. to blame or not. I have started this as an audio. I think I got like twenty percent in. I've got that, haven't I? It's one of the ones. I think it's buried at the back. Yeah, there. I think it's you do have shelves. it. Yeah, because I bought a box set of that author, didn't I? I'm sure it was her. I get her mixed up with someone else. No, not this one. Mm. I'm not no. asking you and what's on my shelves, but <laughs> no. Um, it was Lockhart. E. Lockhart. Yeah, that I this bought. is M. L. Rio. You got um, we were liars and stuff like that. Oh, I get these all mixed up. They're very similar. But names. yeah, so I think that cat outside sounds quite funny. If you can pick that up, it's a cat. Yeah, there's <laughs> a cat that meows plaintively. That's a neighbour's cat that sounds like it's dying, <sighs> but it just does that for a few hours every day. It's great fun. So yeah, that's one that I do want to read. I have picked it up for, and obviously it's Dark Academia, which mm. is my vibe. I don't. I, I don't know. I knew nothing about this book. I just didn't think this, that's what it was. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so they're all like Shakespearean students. So like almost like one of us is next vibes, but older. Mm. Like one of us is lying. Yeah. One of us is lying. Yeah. yeah. But older. Not yeah. And um, less YA. Mm. So, yeah. 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 Next is a series that you are currently reading, A Darker Shade of Magic. That is the one you're reading, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I had to think about that. I don't know why. Shades of Magic series by V. Schwab. So this is a fantasy trilogy. It is a yes. trilogy, isn't it? Um, do you agree? Morally grey? Um, depends what they're saying is morally grey. I think... Lila is the morally grey character and like Holland maybe I'm not so much Kel Kel just does grey shit because he has to so I don't know yeah yes, <laughs> yes. <In conclusion. laughs> so um, Kel is one of the last Antari Antari I've been pronouncing Antari in my head but I'm pretty sure that's wrong Magicians with a rare, coveted ability to travel between parallel Londons, red, grey, white, and once upon a time, black. Kel was raised in Arnes? Arnes? Arnes, yeah. Ar Arnes. It's a problem when you read stuff. Yeah, in my head I've been saying the city is Arnes, Arnes. and then the language is Arnesian. That would make sense, we'll go with that. So that's how I've been doing it in my head. <laughs> um, which is Red London. And officially serves the Maresh Empire as an ambassador, travelling between the frequently bloody regime changes in White London and the court of George III in the dullest of Londons, the one without any magic left to see. Is that our one then? Mm -hmm. Unofficially, Kel is a smuggler, servicing people willing to pay for even the smallest glimpses of a world they'll never see. It's a defiant hobby with dangerous consequences, which Kel is now seeing firsthand. So all the characters but Kel you would say I don't know Kel ends up having to do some Murray Gray stuff mm. but just as a product of like shit getting out of control but he's never he's never good with it so kind of like Six of King vibe, um, Six of King Six of, King? Six of Crow vibes um, in that you have to do it to get by kind of yeah thing. and he starts to get a bit of like a thrill of danger but he never like enjoys killing or anything like that mm. so in a couple of episodes time we'll do a mm. uh, wrap up and whereas like Lila is kind of unapologetically like gives no fucks because like <laughs> she has she has to do what she's had to do to survive mm. but she's very much like she's like oh yeah I killed that guy Ooh, whoops <laughs> <laughs> Yellow, not for him. <laughs> well, yeah, for him. Yeah, she, she's just like, 
really good with knives. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> that sounds so wrong. I think one of the, because we did like a, you and me have done like a buddy read and story graph. Yeah. Um, obviously because I'm reading it first and I think there's one bit where she hits a character over the head with a book and the comment I just put was she hit him over the head with a book lol good for her <laughs> <laughs> I love those kind of comments <laughs> yeah I'd wanted to read that last mm. month and I didn't get around to it so I didn't actually read as much last month because I'd planned yeah. life busy life busy busy okay next is one neither of us have read but we both want to read which is the Red Queen series by oh, I Victoria, don't even have that. Uh, Victoria uh, Abiyard 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 yeah let me say that I'm gonna go with that <laughs> Um, um, I love her on TikTok. She's so funny on <laughs> TikTok. I just love it when people like always going to her like apologize for this in your books, and she's right. just like, nah. nah. <laughs> Sabaha Tahir does that as well the author of the Ember and the Ashes mm, series yeah yeah because the ending of her fourth book Total Tangent is really sad like even when I said to you it made me cry yeah for, like several chapters she's like whenever like <laughs> she did like she did one where it was like uh, give everyone a happy ending or <laughs> destroy everyone <laughs> or like when, whenever people like like I meet them now they just want me to apologise for what I did to this one character and she's like no <laughs> I wrote it and it's happened. <laughs> Stand by it. Anyway, yeah. so tangent over. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this is a fantasy series. There seems to be a uh, a bit of a theme running for all of this. In the ones I picked. Mm, the fantasy series. <laughs> <laughs> so Red Queen uh, is a sweeping tale of power, intrigue and betrayal which sums up most of the fantasy series. Yeah. Mare Barrow's world is divided by blood. Those with common red blood serve the silver-blooded elite who are gifted with superhuman abilities. Mare is a red, scraping by the thief in a poor rural village into a twist of fate throws her in front of the silver court. Before the king, princes and all of the nobles, she discovers she has an ability of her own. Um, I think this is a YA series. Mm and yeah it is yeah and i didn't know anything about it but i've always wanted to read it so yeah i just like i don't know they're part of like the classic set of the 2010s yeah era fantasy i think i saw like i found this meme that was like about 2010s era fantasy wait okay yeah me YA books in 2013 everyone in my society is put in distinct quadrants once we reach the age of 16 ever since the unnamed disaster that caused our dystopian government to be insta- instated there are rules on how we act what we wear and where we live but I will break these rules <laughs> even more funny because a little sneak peek for next week mm-hmm. we're discussing the Hunger Games which is making a comeback at the moment mm. And next is one that I want to read. I don't know if you do. I'm assuming you do because it's fantasy. Yeah, um, I Iron Widow by Sharan J. Chow. Yes, that's not one of the ones I have in the mm. hoard. Mm. It might be on a wish list somewhere. Is she on TikTok? Is she funny? She is brilliant. So the second book has been delayed. Uh, she did a TikTok and she was just like you may be wondering why it's been delayed and basically the publisher didn't pay me in a timely manner so I didn't write my book in a timely manner (laughs) (laughs) yes love that she's just so (laughs) she is just so brutally honest about Mm. everything she's experienced in the publishing world she was like "Um, the publisher didn't pay me in a timely manner so I had to move on to projects that were paying me fucking fair yeah. and she's like so now this is going to be late blame the publishers <laughs> and I love it um, and she's always very brutally honest about how much she earned from it and how mm. they underpaid her because she's I've seen a few to do with like what they actually got paid from their traditionally published books even ones that did well yeah ridiculous and I'm like this is really she got paid like four thousand dollars or something for yeah. it, which is ridiculous. It's like um, fantasy mecha, uh, mecha science fiction mix. Okay, um, and it's a um, inspired by Chinese history. So, the boys of Huexa dream of pairing up with girls to pilot the chrysalises 
giant transforming robots that can battle the mecha aliens that lurk beyond the Great Wall. It doesn't matter that the girls often die from the mental strain. When 18-year-old Zetan offers herself up as a concubine pilot, it's to assassinate the ace male pilot responsible for her sister's death. But she gets her revenge. But she gets her vengeance in a way nobody expected. She kills him through the psychic link between pilots and emerges from the cockpit unscathed. She is labelled an Iron Widow, a much feared and much and much silenced kind of female pilot who can sacrifice boys to power up chrysalises instead. So basically in this world, it's a very patriarchal world obviously, mm. males uh, pilot the robots and um, females are given as um, concubine pilots and they take the energy from the females to pilot the... Okay. So the uh, female pilots don't make it out alive. Right, okay. Um, and she goes in and decides to fuck it all up. <laughs> yeah. um, there's also a polygamous relationship because she does not wish to choose. And um, it just sounds great. And well, that sounds really cool. Yeah, and she is her goal is to destroy the whole thing from the inside. Yeah. So I don't know Damn if she's morally grey or if she's just... Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or if she's just correct. <laughs> um, we know murder isn't okay, guys, but this is fictional, so... <laughs> when it's destroying the patriarchy, it's okay. <laughs> um, next on the list is Throne of Glass by Sarajamas. Yep. 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 Um, All the characters, main character. Hundred percent, the main character is very morally grey. Most of them, most of the characters, I would say, mm. like your big, most of your We've big We've got Faye again, so yeah. Um, you do the official summary before I give my chaotic version. In a land without magic, <laughs> where the king rules of an iron hand, an assassin is summoned to the castle. She comes not to kill the king, but to win her freedom. If she defeats 23 killers, thieves and warriors in a competition, she is released from prison to serve as the king's champion. Her name is Selena? Yeah. Selena. Selena, is that her full name? You've probably told me that. No, um, it's not her name name. We find out it's different later. Sadofian? Sadofian? Sadofian. The crown prince will provoke her. The captain of the guard will protect her, but something evil dwells in the castle of glass and there, and it's there to kill. When her competitors start dying one by one, Selena's fight for freedom becomes a fight for survival and a desperate quest to root out the evil before it destroys her world. So that's just the summary for book one. Yeah. Um... So that's like obviously the first book thinks, oh, it's just this competition to win her freedom. Mm. And then like the rest of the books, you're just like, okay. What happened to what the, was gonna, what happened to the, the competi- initial storyline? The competition just ends by the end of the first book, and you're like, all right. <laughs> cool. Oh, and that's kind of like Hunger Games. Mm, she's like, no, a, no she's the an competition assassin, ends yeah. at the beginning of the first one, and you're like, oh, okay. And then uh, obviously, I've been reading a lot about Hunger Games in preparation for <laughs> Yeah, so obviously, Selena ends up not being who we think she is, because we think she's just, the, she was an assassin who didn't work for the Ardlin Empire which is like this king Mm -hmm. she was just they're like freelance assassins but she was kind of notorious and then when she gets arrested they're like oh shit she's a 16 year old girl we're not going to tell anyone this (laughs) because that's awkward for all of us and then she kind of like provokes the king essentially and so instead of killing her for what she gets caught for he sends her to be a slave in Endivir salt mine which most people don't survive months of and she managed to make it to a year which is when the prince rocks up and is like oh I want to piss off my dad in his competition can you come be my champion if you win I'll set you free eventually <laughs> at some unspecified time no they do or... specify a oh, okay. number of years she has to serve for mm. but we don't know any of her backstory and you kind of don't know t- at the end of the first but you still don't know mm-hmm. just like something happens which reveals like her a true nature and everyone's a bit like shook <laughs> And then shit gets off over the next couple of books. <laughs> so you would say that she is the morally grey character well, from the Well, she's an all. assassin. Yeah, no, I guess that's quite morally grey. And she's a bit kind of like, 
cavalier about death like he would be as an assassin. She's yeah. a very good assassin. Yeah, so you'd have to be very She was like the best assassin in the empire, them. but she was 16. Ah, and okay. so her like she used to wear a disguise when she was assassinating people to keep this whole the secret Mystique. that she was just a 16 yeah. year old girl yeah Selena ends up being more than that uh, and it's all to do with the fallen um, kingdom of Terracin which she came from mm-hmm. this is like an 8 book series yeah. is it 8? Yeah. yeah so I can't really tell you more without so, massive um, spoilers there's probably a lot of backstory to be had and stuff Yes, and then like her love interests are fairly kind of Martin Grey. Mm. There's all these multiple because it's Sarah Jamas, they never fall from first person. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think I think I put this on this list. I don't think I found this on a list. I think I decided this was a really on great one yeah. just because I like the <laughs> <laughs> Um Next is Shatter Me. So this is a series you've read. You're quite a fan of, mm-hmm. aren't you? By Tahira Mathi. Yeah. Um, so I'll read the description of the first mm-hmm. book. One touch is all it takes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> For me to kill you. <laughs> One touch and Juliet Ferrers can leave a fully grown man gasping for air. One touch and she can kill. No one knows why Juliet has such incredible power. It feels like a curse, a burden that one person alone could never bear. But the reestablishment sees it as a gift, sees her as an opportunity, an opportunity for a deadly weapon. Juliet has never fought for herself before, but when she's reunited with the one person who ever cared about her, she finds a strength she never knew she had. This is quite a long series as well, isn't it? Like, there's um, even more coming out even now, I right? There's seven or eight in them. Yeah. Um, six of the main, and then there's loads of like. Novellas, so you can yeah. see there, because I've got. They got compiled into little books as well. So there's oh, all the novellas, yeah. but then they got compiled into books. Mm. So it can be quite confusing. Like you need to look up the reading order. Yeah. Um, because some of the novellas spoil events in the books, so you need to make sure you read them in the right. Oh, order. they are point fives. Like yeah, read them where you're meant to read yeah. them. Yeah. So would you say that Juliet's morally grey, or is it the people around? It's her, her love interest, Warner. Mm. Is he's he's the one because Tony has discussed this series a couple mm. of times, so I have got a grasp of what the series is about. Is he the one that she thinks is evil? But then it turns out he's not so evil, but he's also like again like a product of his environment mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. So when she's still being held by the establishment, she actually has a love interest first there. That's not Warner. It's mm-hmm. a different guy. Warner comes in later. There was very much of its time mm. in the two thousands. But like... there's like lots of things where she, he thinks she thinks he's done something evil, but it was like trickery by the establishment trying to control her and mm. she was never actually her and then Warner had no idea she didn't know it wasn't real mm. but because she's been like tortured for so many years she doesn't really have a very grasp on like what's real and what's not and I and, guess she doesn't trust anyone no so. and she's had it you find out later like her memory's been erased multiple times mm. and that's not a spoiler because it doesn't really spoil any of the events but yeah her memory's been erased multiple times and the book's like written to show her uh, yeah, so it's at first it's written almost like a diary. Mm. So there's like those crossings out, there's repeating sentences, and then later in the books, like as she gets, like as she gets out of the prison and out of isolation, because she's been in isolation for like three years, I think, when the book starts. So you, Sounds you wonderful. You <laughs> oh. She's in like a stone room. No, if I had yeah. some books, it'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's been in isolation three years when the series starts, I think, from memory. Mm. And then the more she, time she spends with people, the narration, like, stops, like, doing that. And, like, I can see the effect that went for, but the first book you just kind of have to get through. Okay. It actually gets quite irritating and reads quite badly. Uh, yeah, like, it's the gimmick has taken too far kind of thing. It's yeah. It's too, too disjointed or whatever. Yeah, and then the rest of them aren't a diary, so it was also, like, mm. a bit weird. The aesthetic um, was decided upon. Yeah, and then we get other people's point of views later, and we find out, like, from their point of views, that like, Yulia, you, 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 yeah, like, repeats stuff to herself and, like, talks to herself quite a lot and mutters mm. to herself. <laughs> so she's, like, still not all right. Like, yeah, like, you're a little bit crazy, bless <laughs> you. Yeah. Oh, bless her. Or, like, because she does a counting thing in her inner monologue, which she, when you hear from her point of view, you, you, you know, she's in her head, she's counting or something. Yeah. But then from there, 
outside point of view, she just kind of stares into space for a second, and like it's just her friend like waiting for us to come back. Like, <laughs> okay, she's doing her thing. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be really funny on the outside, wouldn't it? Oh. Um, yeah, so I think because of Warner is the son of like people who are really important in the reestablishment, which is like the government thing, mm-hmm. and all the kids that are the children of the reestablishment, like council have been raised pretty brutally to do pretty terrible things so their moral compass is a little bit off mm. so but I don't think he never I don't know he is morally grey but he doesn't do bad bad things yeah seems to be a um, a theme not just in that most of these are going to be fancy but mm. a lot of them are just they are the products of yeah their, their life. environment yeah, yeah. <laughs> And next on the list, I don't know if you've read this, I haven't yet. Uh, Caraval. No. Garba. No, I think it's on that 10 TBR we put together, though. Oh, yeah, I think it is, actually. Because I remember saying I've got the first one mm. to read. So the, Stephanie Garber, I said that, yeah. So, mm. welcome, welcome to Caraval. Stephanie Garber's sweeping tale of the unbreakable bond between two sisters. It's the closest you'll ever find to magic in this world. Scarlet has never left the tiny island where she and her beloved sister, Teller, live with their powerful and cruel father. Now Scarlet's father has arranged a marriage for her and Scarlet thinks her dreams of seeing Caraval, the faraway once a year performance where the audience participates in the show, are over. But this year, Scarlet's long dreamt of invitation finally arrives. With the help of a mysterious sailor, Teller whisks Charlotte away to the show. Only as soon as they arrive, Teller is kidnapped by the Caravals' mastermind organiser, Legend. Wow, that was a lot. Mm. And I don't think I've ever actually read what this is about. No, me neither. <laughs> I think that's literally the first time. <laughs> There's so many of these I've never read the actual official blurb no. for. I got Caraval. It was like my first ever... Was it a fairy loot? This is 2017. This is um, the one that I've got is a, the works box set, yeah. I think. So I've got like this fancy copy, mm. and I never, I mean, 2017, I still haven't read it, so. <laughs> I think I bought that a good three, four years ago or more mm. now. And I've got her new series as well, mm. which they're tie ins together. Yeah, so I don't know. Okay, I, I just maybe it all purely the for the aesthetic. <laughs> <laughs> maybe all the characters. Maybe I don't Probably know. You have to let us know. The guy a legend, I reckon. Yeah, like the or guy the that runs master. the thing. Yeah, going to be a love interest. Probably going to be morally grey. Because mm. he owns a magical circus, so he's got to be morally grey, surely. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, sorted. I've decided that. Yeah, that's the answer. Predicted. Let me know if I'm right. <laughs> Tell you when I soon. Oh, this is disgusting. Yeah. Like, I don't know why I keep drinking. The drink. It. Is I don't disgusting. have another drink. <laughs> Next is the Atlas Six <laughs> by Olivia Blake. You can lead discussion on this one because you're obsessed with it. <laughs> I get to meet her soon. I'm so jealous. Of um, that. Also, I was on a virtual question and answer with her mm. and I got to ask her a question as well. Did you? Yeah, like last week or something. That's or the so week exciting. before. Yeah. She was talking about um the new one. Hello no one for my enemy. Mm. And um yeah, I asked her a question. Yeah, I haven't even bought or read a second book yet. I have about a hundred copies of it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the Atlas Six, the Alexandrian Society, caretakers of lost knowledge from the greatest civilizations of antiquity, are the foremost secret society of magical academians in the world. Whoa, what a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Those who earn a place among the Alexandrians will secure a life of wealth, power and prestige beyond their wildest dreams and each decade only the six most uniquely talented magicians are selected to be uh, selected to be considered for initiation. When the newest candidates are recruited by the mysterious Atlas Blakely, they are told they will have one year to qualify for initiation, during which time they will be permitted preliminary access to the society's archives and judge based on their contributions to various subjects of impossibility, time and space, luck and thought, life and death. 
five, they are told, will be initiated. One will be eliminated. The six potential initiates will fight to survive the next year of their lives, and if they can prove themselves to be the best among their rivals, most of them will. Most of them. Yeah, I think each character, mm. except Libby, is quite morally grey. Mm. Libby's very naive. Libby, Libby's like an outlook. Amy from Brooklyn Nine Nine kind mm. of type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like type A and does everything mm. by the book, and everyone else um, understands that they're there to play a game. So I think the plant girl isn't super. Oh yeah, she's not so. Um, she's just Ria. Con- yeah, Rhea. she's yeah. like not there for the bullshit. Basically, she's no. just like I'm here to get through this, like because I want this. Yeah, um, but some of the others, um, in particular, Callum. Mm. Well, no, he's not. He's the one great. that can... he's just bad. Do you like memories and thoughts and now or something? He's like the opposite of um, pre. Oh, I can't remember any of their names mm. now. He's just a really bad. But guy. he's like an empath, isn't he? But like bad empath. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, like can use people's emotions against them rather yeah. than help them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He, he's. I wouldn't say he's morally great. He's just literally a bad guy. Yeah. What is her name? Is it Priya? The that sounds right to me. She and Tristan mm. and Nico. They were. I would say they're quite morally great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's a, it follows six initiates who are talented magician. They, well, no, they're not initiates. They are on the way to be initiates, yeah. and only five will get picked. And they don't seem to realise till about halfway through. Hang on, what, what happens to the mean? the sixth one? Because this is a super secret society that no one's supposed to know mm. about. What the sixth one just goes home? Or and I think Atlas himself is obviously. Atlas is fairly morally great. Morally great, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's a the start of a trilogy. Mm. It's proper, proper dark academia vibes. Yeah, like it's through and through. It's heavily science based magic. It's like yeah, it's like fully discussions of physics, but to do with magic, and I don't even know how to, someone even begins writing that. We should ask your brother to read it and see yeah. what he thinks about it. Yeah, because to me, it seems quite in depthy physics mm. and somehow she's made that magical mm. and I'm like I just want to know how she wrote that maybe you need to ask that question <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah and um, just a little fangirl moment about her <laughs> <laughs> she was obviously talking about all of the books because she just covers so many different genres mm. so there's Alone With You and Aoife because a lot of her um a lot of her indie published books are now being traditionally published. So mm. she's got like two years of just dun 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 dun. Yeah. So Alone with You and Aoife is a a romance, but obviously with her own twist on it. Mm. It's like a romance, and I think there's like sci fi portals or something involved. Or okay. no, 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 I think it's like the same day replays. Okay, okay. And then the one that's coming out in like a week's time or something. One for my enemy is a Romeo and Juliet retelling. Right. Randomly. And then she's got Masters of Death coming out in August, and that's about a vampire real estate agent who's trying to sell Haunted House, and she's trying to get rid of the ghost. So So she's just, like, covering all of these I don't know, I think there's a lot of authors who jump genres, but they Mm. do it under pen names. I just like that they've stopped doing that now. Well, she actually writes under her real name as well. Mm. So, Olivia Blake is her pen name, mm. and then she also writes under her real name, which is Alexine Falmouth, and that she under that name she writes YA fantasy, uh, YA romance. Nice. So fair, fair. fair. She's just all over the place, and you're in love with her. Uh, yeah, just a bit. Natalie has bought every copy of Atlas Six in existence. <laughs> She's the cutest little baby as well. <laughs> That's what my question was to her mm. when I spoke to her about being a mum. Mm. Like, I have mum questions. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. Yeah, I know. I was just I asked her if there's any characters she identifies with differently now that she's a mum. Mm. That's a good question. Um because she was talking about how like 
being a mum has really changed her writing style. Mm. Um, but yeah, and she she's got a little um, her little boy is I think three or four, mm. and the way she talks about him, he sounds quite feral, and it reminds me of my son. So yeah, <laughs> Your feral crunchy, crunchy child life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So Atlas Six, pick it up. Even my other half enjoyed it. So. Mm-hmm. Firm praise. <laughs> uh, next. Harder to please than us, which is like, is it a nice way, but we're good. <laughs> next is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V. Schwab. Which we have both. And Red. the second Schwab on the list. Oh, yeah. Mm. This is an adult book, though. Yes. Um, Do you say Addie is very grey? I think... I don't know why my best going Why so is this on the then? list, actually? Because are they is meaning the... that Luke is morally I mean, great? I mean, mean he's the literally a demon, so... <laughs> I don't think there's... A... I think people say he's morally grey. Mm. They say he's a morally grey romantic partner, but I think people... I think it's another one of those books mm. that people miss sell, and then that's mm. why some people don't enjoy it, because they're sold something different. Yeah, because he's like he's not literally, a romance. he's literally a demon. Yeah, and it's not a romance, even though people say it's a romance. And he'd like done this deal with her, and then because she's around for so long and defies him for so long, they sort of become reluctant pals. Yeah. So I'll read a bit of mm. what it's about in case you don't know. When Addie Larue makes a pact with the devil, she trades her soul for immortality. But there's always a price. The devil takes away her place in the world, cursing her to be forgotten by everyone. Addie flees her tiny hometown in 18th century France, beginning a journey that takes her across the world. I mean, not really across the world, but I know. But learning to live a life where no (laughs) one remembers her, and everything she owns is lost and broken, existing only as a muse for artists throughout history. She learns to fall in love anew every single day. Her only companion on this journey is her dark devil with hypnotic green eyes who visits her each year on the anniversary of their deal. Alone in the world, Addie has no choice but to confront him, to understand him, and maybe to beat him. I think that's what it is. Mm. They're saying Luke's a Murray Gray character, but he's not. He's literally a demon. Yeah. He's literally a demon that I don't think this should be on the list, actually, on deal. second thought. Yeah. And I mean, he's not that mm-hmm. nasty to her, to be fair. He kind of gives her immortality because he's like, you'll get sick of it and want to die and then I get your soul. Yeah. And then no she point, doesn't because she's stubborn. At mm. no point during the whole book does he feel like a danger reaver. Like, mm. he's just... Apart from the end, because her other love interest in it is kind of engineered by the demon to punish Addie and to make her finally say, I'm done. Yeah. But even then, it's just because he's lonely. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I actually don't want you to give up on the deal now because I don't have any buddies otherwise. I stand by my... Um, what's the guy called? The actual yeah, love interest. I've got it here, yeah. What is he called? Henry. 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 I literally have the book physically next to me because Tony just oh, gave yeah, it I'm to me. I stand by my request that the book has been a Henry story. I just think it would have been more interesting. Yeah. And I, I'm i taking a book from Tony because I do want to reread it. This mm. is going to make it sound like I'm negative about it. I'm not. But I think that for a book of a character who has been around since the 18th century, I would have liked her to experience more than just Western cultures. Mm. I don't know. It's just yeah. We we stop in with her in various points of in time, and at no point does she like go anywhere apart from like Europe. France, the UK, and then America. America. I just feel like, like it was the world missing quite some. Works. Yeah, I just feel like it was missing some spice. Yeah, yeah. And like a lot of like, oh, she finds beauty, there and it's just mm. like, oh, you know some pretty like fairy lights in a tree and it's like oh isn't the world wonderful <laughs> mm, yeah and then it ends like if they like they really play up the fact that she's a muse for artists and stuff but she doesn't like I don't know if 
I I like art, and I would have if I had the opportunity. I would travel mm. the world to yeah. see art. I wouldn't just go to Manhattan and then uh, influence a guitarist. I don't. I mean, she spends a good number of years just in like Paris, doesn't mm. she? In the story, yeah. And she's like homeless in Paris, mm. but and that, like where she's a muse for artists, it's basically because you can't write her name down or anything. Mm-hmm. So the only way she can like leave traces of her being remembered in history is where someone uses like inspiration from her for art. Yes, yeah, so or like she, she has, has like freckles, freckles, oh, yeah. and that's like the constellation of stars in a painting. Yeah, and then like the and she loving... helps write songs mm. and obviously the people never know that and she poems and yeah. books and like so she's and then her, the love interest friend is happens to be doing research that's about this mysterious woman found throughout history oh yeah yeah and like Forgot she's like pulling well. together all the different places mm. this, this muse is found I don't think that deserves to be on this list I'm actually going to no. remove it right now and yeah. also I feel like I just feel like the book had a lot of good ideas that could have been expanded on it feels like an unfinished book to me. Yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed it, but I was like, I'm not sure this deserves the amount of hype it got, and that's why I'm giving it to you, because I'm like, I know I'm not going to reread. Yeah. I want to reread it to see if I'm as down on it mm. in a second read. Yeah. But yeah. <clears throat> From Blood and Ash by mm. Jennifer L. Armantrout. I mean, having sex on the ashes of your enemies is quite morally grey, I suppose. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> just, just, just a little. <laughs> Oh, this is a really long description. I'm not going to read it all. Chosen from birth to usher in a new era, Poppy's life has never been her own. The life of a maiden is solitary, never to be touched, never to be looked upon, never to be spoken to, never to experience pleasure. Waiting for her day of her ascension, she would rather be of the guards, fighting back the evil that took her family, than preparing to be found worthy by the gods. But the choice has never been hers. I'm just going to stop there because there's yeah. a lot more. This is a, a series of... Is there going to be six or something? Like the uh, I think we're up to four have come out now. Yeah, but I think it's going to be six total. And they are getting progressively worse. Um, are they getting longer as well? Yeah. <laughs> um, so someone just needs to step in and be like, edit these a bit more, please. And... I think people are going to say the love interest is morally grey. Mm. Because he's meant to be this, like, his his name is literally, like, Dark or Shadow or something. Bullshit like that. Is this Hawk? Hawk, yeah. Okay, yeah. He's, like, as his other persona is the Prince, um, is meant to be, like, super dark and has done terrible, terrible things. And, like, he does murder a guy in the first book because he's mean to Poppy. But then from there, he doesn't do a lot of morally grey stuff. Mm. Like, he kidnaps Poppy with the intention of using her. Mm-hmm. And then, very quickly, is like, simping for this girl. Yeah. And changes his mind. Of course. So, he sort of lies to her for a while about who he is. Yeah. And at the point where he's like, ah, oh, I really like her, he's then like, I'm going to have to tell her the truth. So... He doesn't even keep it going for that long either. No, like they do, like sleep together while he, he she still doesn't know who he is. Mm. But then he feels really bad about that. So you would say he is probably the morally great character, but you yourself wouldn't perhaps. Say... I don't know. I'm literally saying he's killed people and stuff. Yeah, I but know. By in... this point, in going through these books, mm. we've we've turned a bit numb to people dying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like. He's supposed to have done really dark stuff in his past, but in the actual events of the books, he doesn't do that much dark stuff. Mm. He's actually, like, trying really hard to, like, save his people and shit. Mm. So he's, like, a reformed morally great character. Yeah, and he's, like, a total simp for Poppy and, like, does nothing really to hurt her. So... Such a curse breaker. Mm. Um, (laughs) Okay, next one. This is one I've read. You Mm. haven't. This is How You Lose the Time War by Max Mm. Gladstone and Amal El Motar. Um, So let me just do a disclaimer. Like, the weather is just going mad outside the window. It's stormy now. Yeah. It's quite nice. It's just because we're back onto our woods, so it sounds worse than it is because of all the trees. You can see them all, like, swaying. Um, So just in case that can be heard. (laughs) That is all that background noise is. (laughs) Um, 
So, this is an enthralling romantic novel spanning time and space about two time-travelling rivals who fall in love and must change the past to ensure, ensure their future. Thus begins an unlikely correspondence between two rival agents hell-bent on securing the best possible future for their warring factions. So, basically, this um, is all told mostly through letters between yeah. two soldiers from opposing teams in a war that has been going on for centuries um and they are basically known to each other as red and blue so if i'm it's quite a short book it's got 200 pages it is really? yeah um well, i might bump that up my list then because you made it sound really good when you did it in really, the really good reading summary where you read it mm. so the two opposing sides of the war, it's like one side um, wants nature to prevail and one side wants science to prevail, kind of if, you, if I really, really slimmed it down yeah, to like the bare bones of what it is. And these two, red and blue, are like their best spies and they start taunting each other so they leave each other notes mm -hmm. like in various points in time and space where they know the other one's going to be there to assassinate someone or whatever and they start leaving each other notes mm -hmm. and taunting each other and then over the course of the book they do fall in love and I guess they're quite morally grey because they're literally there to assassinate and kill people and mm -hmm. as they talk to each other and taunt each other they start to question what the war is even about kind of thing yeah okay it's a really lovely book actually. yeah i really like the sound of it when you like when you went into all about it mm. yeah it's really good definitely recommend picking it up if you like fantasy science fiction oh, or any, romance any wish lists anywhere let's have a look <laughs> need to make sure it's on there if not because otherwise just, every time i listen to these back i'm like oh yeah yeah that was that a really book. cool book yeah. we talked about <laughs> so many when i review our older episodes and i'm like ah oh, i meant to read that especially the indie ones oh my god yes i just don't have enough time to read all the indie books i want to read because i like obviously got my kindle like kindle unlimited which mm. is for like commuting slash when i'm staying with people who don't like lights on while they're sleeping so i can read <laughs> <laughs> more stuff on the kindles that's where i've been reading more of our the indies that way oh my god come on nothing's loading excuse me sir i'll do the next one whilst yeah, you do that no, so right. this is one that neither of us have read and this is top the top of my list i say and still haven't read it the secret history by donna top yes yes because it's the mama of dark academia mm -hmm. i think this is very similar to we were villains in that someone dies there's a classmate dies and it's about the rest of the students mm. so under the influence of their charismatic classics professor i feel like i've read this so many times mm. <laughs> a group of clever eccentric misfits at an elite new england college discover a way of thinking and living is a world away from the humdrum existence existence of their contemporaries but when they go beyond the boundaries of mortality their lives are changed profoundly and forever i think you've managed to get this book onto so many of our rec lists and i still haven't read it <laughs> it's literally looking at me you literally you literally found a way to get it onto almost every rec list we do and, oh, no, and we now, do sp stick to very specific genres to be fair and the problem is so this one along with a few other books is i've built it up so much i get nervous mm. to pick it up now in case i hate it yeah i never see anything on tiktok about this that's bad i do see a lot of the more diverse readers discuss the problematic things within it okay obviously i will know that going into it so i can't be disappointed by that because i know mm. that's there i just feel like as a fan of dark academia mm. i do should read it yeah this is one of the origin books yeah and as i think a lot of dark academia books are inspired by it i feel like i should read the initial mm. the night circus by erin morgenstern you've read this one huh yes i have i haven't read this one yet you gave me the copy i haven't read it yet did i mm-hmm Oh, 
Don't you remember that. that? No, it was oh. fine. <laughs> I forgot I did that. Yeah. <laughs> was that to keep? I can't remember. Probably was to keep, because I don't think I'll remember it. I think it was in a stack with a couple more as well. Yeah. So every time I clear out my shelves, I just give it to you. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I have such a problem with... I'm like, yeah, I'll take that. I've not read this. I've only read the Starless Sea. I do want to read it. Because mm. I love Erin Melvin Stern's writing style. Yeah, she you love all this kind of spacey, timeless. She's not had anything else out for ages. It was just those two. Oh, Starless Sea came out in 2019. Yeah, 2019 was ages ago. What have you been doing? Not writing books, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> the circus arrives without warning. No announcements precede it. It is simply there. When yesterday it was not. Within the black and white striped canvas tents, this is beautiful weather for reading, isn't it? Oh, I know. I'm getting in like <laughs> redoing. This is like you're in like a cozy. Oh, I've got a nice. This nice is coffee. like the ambient sounds yeah. I put on when I'm reading. <laughs> um, within the black and white striped canvas tents is an utterly unique experience full of breathtaking amazements. It is called Le Cirque de Reves and it is only open at night. But behind the scenes, a fierce competition is underway a duel between two young magicians, Celia and Marco, who have been trained since childhood expressly for this purpose by their instructors. M- 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 Real instructors? Material? Yeah, what's that? that mean oh, i can't remember what material means you need like word. i thought i was at mine so i was about to ask google but um i love reading in the bedroom with google because when i find a word i don't know i'm like what's this mean mercurial mercurial meaning uh subject to sudden unpredictable changes of mood or mind oh Unbeknownst to them, assholes, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Unbeknownst to them, this is a game in which only one can be left standing, and a circus is but the stage for a remarkable battle of imagination and will. Despite themselves, however, Celia and Marco tumble headfirst into love, a deep, magical love that makes the lights flicker and the room grow warm whenever they so much as brush hands. Is the morally grey people the people that are making them fight? without telling them the true meaning of Christmas. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and then, like, the things the magicians do are fairly kind of morally grey-ish, because the the two of them that are in competition with each other, this circus has basically been spelled Mm -hmm. a certain way. So, like, the people who are in the circus, they they don't know they're in a magical circus at first, Mm because it's, like, it appears fairly normal, but the magicians keep adding to it, because it's, like, the stage for the competition. Um... So slowly the circus becomes more and more magical and they don't realise there's a protection spell over the circus, which basically means the people who work for the circus don't age. Oh, I remember you saying this before, yeah, when yeah. I was asking about And there's stuff like, they don't know the magic is real, so there's one person who basically goes a bit mad because they're like, am I crazy? Like, is there magic? And like, no one will confirm it, like Celia won't confirm it. Everyone knows Celia's a bit mystical. And she works in the circus, whereas Marco never actually physically... You don't know. We, Celia doesn't know he's her competition. He works in the back office of the guy who, like, bankrolls the circus. Okay. Celia works in the circus physically there. And so the whole time she doesn't know Marco's her competition, because Marco knows it's her. Oh, okay. And it ends up almost like the rooms start to become... Like, they're doing clever magic that's kind of, like fun for the other person mm-hmm. so it ends up being almost like a love letter of like you really like this cool bit of magic that I've done oh so a bit like this how you lose the time yeah they don't vibe. actually speak yeah. for a really long time it's almost like the the magic becomes little love letters to each other oh. and like really cool magic that's just clearly just to please the other one. Oh, I like the sound of that oh, yeah I need to bump this up it's a, it's a cute story it's like it's definitely the kind of thing you like because it's a bit meandery <laughs> It's a bit like, ooh. <laughs> um, it's, it's vibes. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's vibes. You know, obviously they're describing. I mean, it's like, sounds like the Sea, which yeah, is vibes. They're describing the magical rooms, which are also always bizarre. And the people that kind of get brought into the world of the circus, who are like, are all normies who don't know that magic's a thing. But are like, this is definitely magic, right? <laughs> Yeah, I think they're good books. I don't know. They don't really hurt anyone. 
It's just that, that all the people in the circus are subject to their magic. Without their permission. Yeah. The Bridge Kingdom by Danielle L. and Jensen. Yes. I think this is one that I decided was going to go on the list. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> I assume you added it. Rather than one that came from somewhere else. Yeah, that's that one up there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've got this on my Audible list. Would recommend. Because you recommended it. Mm. What if you fell in love with the one person you'd sworn to destroy? Laura? No, Lara? Laura. 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 That's how they say it in the Audible. Laura. Right? Yeah. Has only one thought for her husband on their wedding day. I will bring your kingdom to its knees. A princess trained from childhood to be a lethal spy, Laura knows that the bridge kingdom represents both legendary evil and legendary promise. The only route for a storm-ravaged world, the bridge kingdom controls all trade and travel between lands, allowing its ruler to enrich himself and deprive his enemies, including Laura's homeland. So when she is sent as a bride under the guise of fulfilling a treaty of peace, Laura is prepared to do whatever it takes to fracture the defences of the impenetrable bridge kingdom. Dun, dun, dun. Does that sum it up quite well? Yes, except the bridge kingdom's not exactly what she thinks she's been brought up to think it is. Um, They're not starving her people. Like, it's actually her dad who's a bit dodge. Her father uh. the king. But she's basically been raised to assassinate the king of the bridge kingdom. Mm-hmm. And then she gets there and she's like... <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> and they feel like this instant connection. And he's like, he's aware of the way women from where she's from are raised to be quite like subdued and like demure, demure and this yeah. kind of stuff. And he like, he's like, even though we're married, I'm not going to force you to do anything. We'll let, let, let you be. Like, we're going to get to know each other. Mm. And, you know, things will happen when they happen. But he's like, I'm not going to touch you without your permission, like, ever. Like, we, we're good. And then she's like playing the part of this sort of dainty demure mm. thing where she's like literally creeping around his compound like how can I assassinate you <laughs> how can I bring down your kingdom don't be suspicious don't be suspicious um, <laughs> and then he ends up being quite hot quite attractive quite a nice guy and then she because he originally was going to keep her at this compound which is where they were going to get to know each other but also kept her separate so she couldn't spy just in case mm. but then the shit kind of happens that means she mm. ends up going out into the bridge kingdom like wider world and kind of seeing them for what they are and she's like oh maybe maybe they're, maybe they're not the bad guys mm. but she kind of comes to that revelation a bit too late this is a Geology. Truly, it's actually big. Wow, well, this the story of these characters is the geology. Yeah, and then it goes on to a different but it's character gonna, in the same world or the same timeline. It goes, ah, it jumps back. Okay. So the third book is the timeline told from her brother's point of view, her brother the prince. Okay. But at the same time as the events of the Bridge Kingdom. Ah, okay. So like parallel. Yeah. Mm. When the second book in that is just about to come out. Oh, cool. I think July, but she releases exclusively on Audible first. And they're in the library, so yeah, you can, in the if you have library. a um, an account, you can listen to them for free well, without using free. a um, yeah without using your credit. credit. Yeah, and um, they're quite good audios. Yeah, they're on my list. Like uh, the only thing I'll say is they have like weird between each chapter break. They have different sounds to do with the theme of the book, and the first book is storms. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you've been sound asleep, and then suddenly a crashing thunderstorm. I don't really off. get along with sounds and music between chapters and stuff because mm. I listen to it at quite a fast speed. They mm. just sound like... Blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, and then the second book is drums, which again, oh, weren't good for sleeping. Asleep, yeah. I can't remember what's in the third one. Oh, that's quite a cute... That's mm. a cool... Yeah. Cool thing to add if in. If you weren't sleeping to them, mm. it was quite nice. <laughs> Last on our list. <gasps> We're doing so well. Yeah. The Witch's Blade by A.K. Mulford. Oh, I have read this. Just The Witch's Blade. Um, oh, yeah, I didn't think the characters in High Mountain Court were that morally no, grey. No, no, agreed. So this is the five crowns of... Oak 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 oh, That's how I always Oak say it. Oak Oak that's how A.K. Mulford says it in TikTok. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, um, this is what I have added myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's going to be presumably five books. Mm-hmm. I think so. And then she's just released the Evergreen Air is coming out soon. Yeah. Series. Oh, 
Yeah, so tell us all about... Oh, shall I read it from yeah. here? Yeah. I don't know if you need to... <clears throat> Will the Witch's Blade one on its own make sense? Or do we need to go back to Crime Minds and Court? I'll read this and see okay. what it says. 18-year-old Ruadora... Ruadora? Ruadora is how I read it. Yeah. Uh, Damascus now possesses the... What, what, why are we stuck on? <laughs> no, I'm wondering if that's a spoiler. Is it relevant to this first? No, I don't think it matters from no. the first one. Now possesses the immortal blade. But when Rua discovers the Northern King's uncle is alive and has cast a spell on a blue witch army, she realises that the battle was just beginning. Um, yeah, that could be a standalone, mm. couldn't it? So... Yes, yeah, so the first book covers her sister Remy coming to terms with like her power and her heritage and kind of coming out of hiding basically mm. with the hot fae prince dude. Um, and she's a witch. She's a witch, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then the second book follows the story of her sister Rua after the events of High Mountain Court. Mm. Where so the the Northern King was kind of the tyrant. And the events in book one kind of deal with him. And then she, his son, the prince of the Northern King, which is like a tyrant kingdom that's fucked everything up and destroyed the High Mountain Court before the events of the first book. And then he's just like, I'm not like my dad, but I've had to pretend to be like my dad for some time just in yeah. order to survive. That's something that's happened in a lot of these books. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's why I thought he's kind of morally great because he has done some pretty reprehensible stuff mm. in order to keep his secret and keep himself safe and in order to be able to like kind of protect the kingdom from within yeah like the decisions made because mm. he's known as the witch killer yeah and Remy hates him and Rua kind of goes to get away from Remy because of like family stuff Rua goes with him to kind of keep an eye on the northern court and help set things back up and like help save the witches that have been kind of enslaved in the northern court Mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff and in that process she's going through her own trauma that she's healing from um and then she kind of discovers that he's just like just as damaged Mm -hmm. but he's done some pretty dodgy stuff and continues to unapologetically do what he must to protect I think um, people he cares the about. The sign of a good fantasy series is damaged characters. Mm. <laughs> I've just realised Zodiac Academy should probably be on this list. Oh yeah, probably. I'll add it on for future people. Mm. It's on the list now, guys. I don't know if it was on the the full list that was on it my might blog. Have I been... had forty on my blog. Yeah, it might have been one I just mm. didn't uh, add on. Look at us! Very little tangenting. Yeah, we got through that. the full list. Um, so yeah, I would say Witch's Blades, definitely. Mm. Um, I haven't read The Rope Crown, so I cannot comment on that one. Um, I don't think they're morally grey in that one. Um, so Just badass warriors. Each book in the series like follows a different kind of romance trope as mm. well, so they're very fun to read. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely someone who like loves the genre. You can yeah. just tell. It's yeah. like a love letter to the genre. That's all, yeah, always said about these books. Yeah, yeah. I really enjoy them. Mm. I'm excited for the next one. Yeah, and okay, well, Alfred is a, a babe if you follow her on TikTok. Yeah, she's really fun to follow on TikTok. Yeah. Um, but Evergreen Air is a non-binary neurodivergent main character. <gasps> oh, that sounds good. Because um, it's a story of Nilo. Yes. Yeah. Took me a while there. It was a while ago I read the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I read the how... how the high amount in court as an arc so mm. it's been a long time since i read that yeah. i want to reread i think that's another one where you recommended it to me and then i've gone and bought the whole series and read the whole series <laughs> is there has it been re-edited for the harper voyager edition i haven't reread the first one mm. since they were re-released as yeah. traditional published so i don't know mm. i because i've re-listened on audible i haven't reread. Because when I reread it, mm. I might pick up the new one and just reread mm. that. Okay, cool. Yeah. I think that was like a, quite a good list. It was a mixture, yeah. obviously. It's always going to lean more uh, fantasy because that is our reading taste. <laughs> so I mean, to share it, some with us. When I did put the list together, I went from I went on Goodreads, I went on Storygraph, I went on a bunch of different sites, and then I also went through a bunch of TikToks, which is why it ended up being 40 books long. 
Yeah. And I put my my list together. Yeah, and then so, I've gone and handpicked some out of it. So we actually want to talk about. Him. Yeah. <laughs> I was um, specifically looking for ones that we've chat. read or want to read. Yeah. That's a good little yeah. list. Because I've uh, already read or I want to read. Yeah. yeah. But hundred percent, I've running on that list. <laughs> So yeah, I think that was good. Please give us some um, recommendations on our Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, you can follow us on Instagram, on TikTok. I'm still going to plug it even though I've yet to put anything on there. <laughs> um, we have a Facebook and a LinkedIn. You can follow our website, which is lazybookloverspodcast.wordpress.com. And on there, you can send us any recommendations mm-hmm. or videos or books. If you're an indie author, there's a submission form on there for us to discuss mm-hmm. your book. Um, please rate, follow, download, subscribe, whatever the option is on whichever platform you listen mm-hmm. to the podcast. And um, that really helps us, especially um, going forward, because we want to try and get some sponsors. Um, some dollar. <laughs> and if you just like to listen at work and you can't listen to your Spotify or whatever, um, you can put us on on YouTube and just have us on in the background there. Yes. So yeah, that's Come my, check my, us out my, my one places. podcast tool that I do re- regularly. Go <laughs> <Got> me. <laughs> <laughs> or you can listen to the episodes on the blog if it's updated. So yeah, um, you can find us everywhere. On our homepage, it's always the f- um, it it's a feed. It in. Yeah. So the homepage is always running up to date, whether or not I've done the blog post. <laughs> There we go. So come follow us everywhere. Give us some love. Yeah, come love us. We work so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Speak to you Bye. soon. Bye. Bye.